wait, 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 hold on. That's not magic. That's just moving cards around in a somewhat super impressive way. Not magic. Let's try that again. No, that's wrong too. Card magic is the beauty of creating effects with the use of card manipulation to fool and entertain your audience. I came up with that on the spot. So let's try one more time. What up crew, it is Magic Monday and this is your place to learn magic, master your performance, and captivate audiences. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you two card tricks that you can pretty much learn immediately just so that you can prove to your parents that you have some level of talent and then with that talent, you can start a YouTube channel so they can tell all their friends that you started a YouTube channel just so that maybe one day, maybe one day you'll be a star. <sighs> all right, let me give you a quick preview of these tricks. Imagine taking a handful of playing cards, handing them over to a spectator, blindfolding yourself, and then having the spectator cut as many cards as they want from the top to the bottom, and knowing exactly how many cards were cut. That is trick number one. The magician will split the packet into two even piles and leave one odd card out. This one odd card will be added to one of the piles and given to a spectator. And just with a snap of the fingers, the card will teleport from one pile to another. So two tricks, five minutes to learn each. Grab your favorite deck of playing cards, and now let's do this. Oh, and by the way, if you wanna learn a ton of free card tricks, make sure you stick around because somewhere in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you something really cool. Now let's do this. All right, yo, so check this out. For those of you who are curious, they're gonna be using the Rise playing cards, and I change up the camera angle on you just to, you know, always keep you guessing. We'll start by giving the deck a bit of a shuffle. I feel like that's what I always do at this point, so you can just probably expect that all the time. And now I'll take a couple of cards from the top of the packet, let's just say this many cards, and I'll put the rest of the deck over to the side. Now I'm gonna hand this to you, and I want you to give this packet as many cuts as you like. Let's say you wanna give it one cut like this, another cut like this, another cut like this. Excuse my cutting skills, I'm used to cutting way more playing cards, and maybe just one last cut like this. So at this point, you've uh, the deck has been shuffled, I've picked out some number of cards, you've cut them as many times as you'd like, What's gonna happen at this point is I'm gonna put this packet right over here. I'm gonna give it to you. You can hide it from me, that's fine. You can completely hide it from me. I'm gonna put on a blindfold, not not right now because that's very high effort type stuff. Then I'm gonna go and uh, jump into, into a ditch. You're gonna bury me in that ditch. And then before I go though, I will tell you to move a certain number of cards from the bottom of the packet to the top. So let's say you wanna move this many cards. Take a look and remember that number. Put that on top of the packet. No, you're gonna hide this from me. Obviously, I'm in a ditch and buried alive. I don't actually know what's going on. Once you bury me out, this is a very high maintenance card trick. You bury me out, you uh, take me out of the ditch, and now I still have my blindfold on. I'm gonna spread out these cards, like so, once you hand the cards over to me. And now I'm not only gonna tell you how many cards you moved from the bottom of the deck or the bottom of the packet to the top, I'm also gonna find the card that indicates the number of cards that you moved. Are you ready for this? This card. This card right here has spoken to me. The value of this card will tell me how many cards you moved from the bottom of this packet right to the top. You ready for this? I think you moved five cards. All right, my friend, so welcome to the tutorial. Just to give you some background on this effect, it is known as an incomprehensible divination by Howard Thurston, and uh, it does require a little bit of a setup, but it's a neat little packet trick that you can learn in like five minutes or less. So let's go ahead and break it down. You're gonna start off by putting these cards on top of the deck in this order. You have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, can you guess the next one? Ace and then Jack. You take all these 11 cards, put them right on top of the deck. And when you're performing this, you wanna give the deck a false cut or false shuffle, right? So if you take the cards out of the tuck case at first, and uh, if you just straight up start performing, a lot of people will be like, oh, something could have been set up. So you wanna give the deck maybe like a false cut. And uh, an easy way that you can do this is uh, you can take this packet of playing cards, take it, break it off like this. This is called a Biddle Grip, holding it like this. Break off this packet with your index finger. Take it out like this. Your index finger of your other hand is gonna come swivel this around like so. Put this on the table in front of you and put these cards on top. And you know what that does? Absolutely nothing. Your cards will still remain in order on top. If you wanna learn more about false cuts, I have a video, I'll put the link to it on the screen. But uh, you take the cards out, you give this deck a uh, false cut, and now you're ready to start. You tell the spectator you're gonna take some cards off the top of the deck. 
So the easiest way that I see to do this is I count off five cards like this, one, two, three, four, five, and then I do three and three. That adds up to 11 and you have your 11 cards. I'll take those, put them right there. You can put the rest of the deck over to the side. Now you can hand this packet over to the spectator and allow them to give the packet as many cuts as they'd like. And these are of course real cuts. Let's say one cut like this, one cut like this, one cut like this. Once they're done doing this, you want to take a look and memorize the bottom card. So you can, uh, while, what I do when I'm doing this performance is I pick this up and say, you are allowed to give this packet as many cuts as you wanted. And as you're doing this, you're going to take a look at the bottom card. Now, I don't want the bottom card to be a jack just for, uh, I guess you'll see later on. I don't want the bottom card to be a jack. It's just, it's just too simple. Uh, I'm going to take the bottom card and make it a seven. Okay. So uh, we have the bottom card. You take a look at it while you're talking to the spectator. Again, you take a quick peek. Don't be like too obvious about it. Just boom, looking at it. But you take a quick peek, hand it back to the spectator. And now you can literally uh, leave the room or I don't know, hide in a ditch, whatever you want to do, blindfold yourself. And you tell the spectator to count uh, any number of cards on the bottom of the packet and move it to the top. But remember that number, right? You have to remember that number seven to remember the value of that card. And let's just say they take three cards, move them from the bottom to the top. And now they call you back in. You can keep your blindfold on, which is the coolest part of this trick. And you come in, you spread out the cards. And you spread out the cards because you, you tell the spectator, not only are you gonna be able to find or tell them the number of cards they move from the bottom to the top, but you'll also find the card with the value that indicates how many cards they moved. So if they moved uh, eight cards, you would find the number eight. So what you're gonna do now is come over to the seventh card because remember the bottom number was seven. If it was four, you'd come to the fourth card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Check this out. The seventh card is going to be valued at three because that's how many cards they moved. Bam, three. And that is a neat little incomprehensible divination. Before we move on to the next video, I wanna take a quick break and let you know that I learned both of these card tricks through my friend Jacob at The Daily Magician. On his website, which I'll put a link to in the description, he offers 24 magic books for free that are valued at almost $2,000, which really is not a bad deal. All you have to do is sign up for his email list. And by the way, I'm not getting anything for promoting this aside from sharing these tricks and books with you. So check it out if you like, absolutely zero pressure. Let's move on. All right, yo, so check it out. I got one more neat little card trick for you that will use some part of my brain and maybe even some parts of your brain. We'll start as always by giving the deck a bit of a shuffle, maybe a couple of cuts because we can. And uh, now I'll take a couple of cards out right here. Uh, that should be, that should be fine. Now I've taken out an odd number of cards and I'm gonna split them up into two piles and I will have one card remaining left over. And as you can see, one card left over. Now let me talk to you a little bit about math that you're all probably familiar with. If we have an even number, so in this pack, in this case, we have two even packets. If we have an even number and we add one to it, it'll become odd. So if we have the number 10, we add one to it, it'll become odd. So if we have a packet of 10 cards here, we add one to it, it'll become odd. Now I want the spectator to take this card and put it on top of any packet they'd like. Of course, instead of a spectator here, let's just say they wanna put it on top of this packet. And they're gonna now take this odd packet. Hopefully you can see that on your screen. And I'm going to take the even packet. Now watch for the moment this happens. You ready? Just like this. Now I should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. I have the odd packet and you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have the even packet. This next trick is known as the piano trick by uh, Thomas Nelson Downs. And the reason it's known as a piano trick is because I couldn't really do it in my performance, but I'll, I'll show you how, how it works. So you start off by giving the deck a shuffle. You can allow the spectator to shuffle up the deck because I like to allow the spectator to do it because the more they interact with the deck, the better the, I guess, uh, impact will be at the end. So they've shuffled up the deck as much as they'd like. Now you take the deck back and ask them to put their hands like this, right? So like this. This way there's some gaps between each of their fingers. Now you're gonna take two cards and put them between um, each of their fingers. And as you put them in, again, this is completely different than my performance, but of course, feel free to do whatever you'd like. Uh, the way that, uh, that he explained it is you take two cards, put it between his fingers, say even, take two more cards, show them, put them between his fingers, say even, do it again, say even, do it again, say even, 
And you're gonna keep doing this for all fingers. Obviously I can't do it with both hands, but you ask them to put both hands down. You say even, 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 and then even, even, even. And the last thing you do is say odd. Okay, and that'll give you how many packets? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven even packets plus one. Uh, so that'll be a total of 15 cards. So let's take out 15 cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, and uh, one more that makes 15. And uh, this card trick really relies on the principle of the spectator not taking, like, not thinking too deeply into what you're doing and just taking your, um, I guess, your, your word at its value or taking what you're saying at, at its value. So of course you can't do this for like super smart engineering people because that I had that problem and it was not great. But the point is you put the cards between their fingers and said even, 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 even. And then you say odd for the last card, telling them that this uh, packet has an odd number of cards. And you can use the example that I used in my performance. And you tell the spectator, you're gonna split this packet into two even piles, which you exactly what you're doing, right? The piles themselves, will be even piles as um, relative to each other. But the number of cards in the pile are not even. So you're kind of going off or using wordplay in this case to say that they're even piles because they're not actually even. They contain seven cards and seven cards, which makes them, I guess, even to each other, but not even by themselves. And now I explain the whole concept of um, the even and odd card. If you add one card or if you add the number one to any even number, you're going to get an odd number. So I allow the spectator to put this on either one they want. Let's just say this one. So now this had seven cards. You added one more, it becomes even. But in the spectator's mind, you're telling them that this is an odd number of cards. You hand that to them and you take the even packet. And from here, if you'd like, you could do a recap or just uh, go right into it and say, I'm gonna snap my fingers and a card is gonna jump from either my packet to your packet, your packet to my packet, and make your packet even and my packet uh, odd. And that's exactly what you do. Then you. Count the number of cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Your packet is now odd. And you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let them count it out and their packet is now even. Again, this trick is more of an effect in your mind versus what's happening on the table. So uh, be careful with who you do this to. If you wanna continue learning some quick and simple card tricks, click on this video right over here. I think you may like what you see. If you have some extra time, feel free to go ahead and check out my Patreon. It would really mean a lot. Thanks so much for spending your time with me. As always, it was a pleasure having you here. Have a great day ahead, and I hope to see you in the next video, or that one.